Hi, I'm Josh from Simple Thought Productions, and today I wanted to share with you a workflow that allows me to have up to 16 inputs on screen and then fly any of the sources to full screen uh, appropriately with the video or input going full screen to be on top of all the others. So in this example, you can see that this uh, random source came in full screen above all others, and then when it returns, it goes back. And being able to select any of the 16 inputs to come up full screen without being behind any of the others. So if I bring up uh, ME6 right here, you can see that I have four sources, and I have it set up in the traditional way. So if I'm to come in here and I was to just do a comp where I make one of these full screen, my input inside of key one went full screen, but now I have these three keys because of the way the layering works. You have your background, then you have upstream key one, two, three, and four. So since I made four full screen, but I still have sources of it set on keys two through four, those stay above it. And of course, in this particular case, I want to see this particular in background. So one thing I could do is fade these off and set them as a comp. So if I come back out to my comp and come back down, I could fade them off. And, you know, that looks okay, but when I come back, you know, they all fade in on each other and it doesn't look that great. It, it's workable, but it's, it's not perfect. Another option I could do is I could change the X position of these things and push the ones that I'm not using offline or off the visible area. Uh, so if I come through and do that on one of these, you can see I slide these off and then slide them back. Um, that's a little bit cleaner. And depending, you, you know, you could put each of these into a different location so that they all kind of scatter shot um, as needed and you can go through. But again, I don't think that's the cleanest uh, way. And then finally, you have the ability to manipulate Z priority. Z priority will basically change the ordering that I just talked about in terms of background, key one, two, three, four. Z priority will change that. So if I come in and make one of these uh, full screen again, uh, let's get one where we were back here and we say, if I was to make this reset full screen, and I was to change the Z priority as soon as this Z priority is above what the others have. So in this case, I just need to go to one. It will be above, even though it's inside a key one, it will now be above the others. So if I was to make this my comp view, when I come back down comp and, and I come into this, it'll do the right thing. And then if I go through these, I can now have it where, because in this particular comp, I've set the Z priority, uh, you can see here, to where it's five, and then the other ones are left at zero. And then if I come out on this comp and go back to here, and then I go to this particular one where now key is above all the others, key two, I can see that this Z priority is set to five, but the rest are at zero. So that's how we do that. So if I only have four input sources that I need to work with, this setup inside of a singular ME works really well. Um, I can do four large sources, bring them up, bring them down, using comp animation, and everything flows pretty smoothly. But if I need more than four, um, I can do multiple layers. Uh, right now we're using a TC2. Uh, I can set this to be four layers. So now I have eight layers inside this ME. The issue is that layers A through D do not have a Z priority. So D, C, B, A is the layer order followed by keys one, two, three, four. If I change the Z priority, it only impacts the keys that are in use, but the background layers of A through D will not change. So that would still leave me with four sources that I would be unable uh, to manip manipulate. So in this particular case, what a workflow to get to 16, we're going to use ME reentry where we bring in uh, four configured MEs the same way. So each ME will have four sources, so four by four to get to the 16. And the part we have to do to make that work also is chroma keying, because unfortunately the ME reentry will not preserve alpha layer. 
So if I just take a quick look um, at the MEs, I'm going to use MEs 2, 3, 4, and 5. All of them are set to DDR1 where I have a green screen image set. And then on each of those MEs, I have gone through to the image tab and done keying. So if I turn that off, you can see that ME2 has a green um, screen and I let go and I key it and now I can do the re-entry. So if I bring up ME1 onto program again, you can see the 16 sources along with on ME1, I have a background of a buffer, just some background imagery playing. And then what we're looking to do in this particular case, the way that we solve this is simply to say, we know that one of these 16 sources is going to go full screen. If it's in ME1, then we want ME1, or in this case, ME2. If ME2, the first ME that we're using for re-entry, if that is the one that we want to go full screen, we want that to have a Z priority that is above the other MEs. If we were to go to having ME3, which would be in this segment, be on top, we simply need to make this one have the highest Z priority. And then inside of ME3, the appropriate input would also have the appropriate Z priority. So effectively, to do this workflow, we're manipulating the Z priority of the ME to be on top, whichever one we're about to expand from its potential candidates, each ME having four sources. So if we want to get one in our bottom right, we would need to say ME5. So if I go to comp and click on five, we see the little blue gear appear on it. That tells us that something has been modified from the default. So uh, I've got it set to five. If I come back and do four, I see four gets the blue gear and it has five. And if I go back to five, it's set back to zero. And again, any number above the others will allow this to work. I just have a habit of using five. Um, you can use any number you want. You can use negative numbers, et cetera. It's a range of negative 10 to 10 um, for the changing. So to make this 16 input work, we need to change the Z priority of the given region and then the actual one inside the ME. So to do that, I, I'm not gonna, you know, I could do this manually by saying, okay, if I want to bring up something from ME3, which is in the second segment, I'm going to click 3. So now 3 has the priority. Then I could come over to 3, and let's say I want speaker number 3. That worked the way that I was wanting. And then finally, when we're done inside of ME3, I put it back down. And then we say, OK, now we want to go and we want to do one that's in the fifth comp, so we are the fifth ME, so we click number five, then I go over to five, and this time we want speaker number two. So it comes up, and then when it's over, we can bring this down. So that is one way with clicking, but I'd like to do it through macros and actually use the variables to help out. So if I come look at my macros and look at the global variables, I have two variables at the moment. One is the ME for full screen. Which of the ME's are we going to take to full screen? There's a value um, that we have, ME's two through five effectively. And then finally, which source, one through four, of the given ME do we want to bring full screen? So with those two values set, we can now come into our macros for this and we can actually map them out. So in this particular case, I haven't done all 16, but I have several ready. So if we look at the variables over here, we have variables set to two and four right now. And then I have a macro called 2-1. Let's take a look at that. So macro 2-1 is setting the global var variable for ME for full screen set to two because it's ME2 that we want to manipulate. That's what the two stands for. You could call this whatever you want. I, I'm doing it as a matrix to make it easy for me to keep everything straight. And then source input one. So I set the variable for source for full screen to one. And then I call a macro, play the macro by name called comp full. So that's all this variable does, this macro does. So if I was to play it, I can see here the variables changed to uh, ME2 and then the source one for one and it went and then if I was to do the comp reset, 
we can have that. And then if I call a different one, let's say we wanted to do 5.1, that goes full screen, and then the comp reset. So you may find yourself asking, why do we bother calling an external ma macro for the other part? And that's simply because if I was to put all the steps inside of the macro for 2-1, if I decided, you know what, after, after we go full screen, maybe I want to bring up a title and I'm going to use the title that's on, you know, data link. So I want to bring that up um, after something goes full screen. That would mean that in that particular case, if I decided that after I kind of had everything configured or I needed to make a change in the, the moment of how the animation looks or anything else, I would potentially need to modify all 16 macros to make that change, which could be, you know, if you got time, that could be fine, but I don't really want to change all 16. So in this particular case, I try to compartmentalize almost kind of like doing functions and programming where the macro is simply setting, what do I want to manipulate? And then I call the one that is going to do the actual work. So if I need to change something that's happening on all 16, I simply change it here, and the second I change it here, inside of the comp full macro, the result will be all 16 when called will do the appropriate thing, and I don't have to edit all 16 macros. So let's take a look at comp full and see what it's doing. In this particular case, we're saying on ME1, load comp in, and then we have the variable expression, uh, which in this particular case is going to be ME5. Uh, so by putting the variable inside of the curly brackets, it'll be expanded to its value, which in this case is five, which was set by the previous macro. And then finally we say uh, V and it's the ME for full screen, same variable. So this way we can then do a call to load comp in, and then we say it's for the source to go full screen. So this allows it to read this and say, okay, here we're going to load comp in number five on V1. And then on V5, we are going to load comp in one. So that translates all these sorts of things for us. And then finally on the comp reset, we know that we need to set the ME that had gone full back to the starting position, which in this case is comp in five. Um, so in this particular case, we will read the variable that was currently set, i.e. 5, so V5, load comp in 5. So if I come in and look at any of the ME's comp, 5 is always the reset position. So by having these two variables and then using them with comp full and comp reset, I can make sure that the appropriate screen that has gone full screen can always be reset properly. And then we can jump around to the different um, things that we want. So by doing this, we are now able to have 16 sources fly full screen and make sure that they're always above the other inputs and look clean and not have to also have individual resets where you have to think about it and say, oh, what, what ME is this source on? It's on ME3. Okay, I need to set ME3 to go back to its initial view you never really have to think about it. You only have to think about assigning a macro to one of these inputs and say, make that one go full screen. So you'd have 16 source inputs effectively. And then from there, you always use the same reset without having to track anything. That's the use of the variables, uh, which I find you know really useful. And that's available on the TC2 and the TC1 Pro. Um, and I believe part of premium access for some of the older machines as well. Uh, but it really helps out uh, going through and being able to expand the variables and not have to track this stuff individually. So that's the workflow on how to have upwards of 16 inputs and have them fly over appropriately. I'll share the macros on the website as well so you can download them. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask.